What's up guys, this is Instinct here, back with my newest banner template. I'll show you guys how to edit it in Cinema 4D and Photoshop. So what you want to do is you want to click the link in the description and it'll bring you to this page. From here, just click download. Now once it's done downloading, it should be down here somewhere, so just click on it. And once you click on it, it should look something like this. So from here, you just want to drag the folder onto your desktop to extract it. By the way, you're going to need WinRAR. I'll link a tutorial in the description on how to get WinRAR. From here, just open the folder up. And then if you already have the font installed, then you're good to go. But if you don't, just double click on the font. And then double click on the true type font file. So it's this one. Double click on that and just click install. Once you have the font installed, just open the Cinema 4D file, that's the one with the Cinema 4D logo on it, and it says C4D and C4D file, so just double click on that. So once Cinema 4D is open, you're actually going to need the plugin Nitro Blast. Now if you don't have Nitro Blast, I'll link it in the description below. So from here, just set this to one frame, and then you can move on to your text. So just click on the text layer here, and backspace template out, and write your name or whatever you want it to say. So I'm just going to type in your name, but for you, just put whatever your name is. So from here, just click Atom Array and then click the plus button and do the same thing. Click Motext 1 and just replace it with the text you used before. All right, so once this is done, you just have to do one more thing and that is to add the Nitro Blast. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you're selected on the Motex layer and go to plugins and go to Nitro Blast and go to Nitro Blast main. From here, choose low if you have a bad PC and if you have a really good PC, use extreme and anywhere in between. And so for me, I'm going to choose high and then change pieces to 50. It just works well with 50. I highly recommend 50. And then everything else is just a default, so just click Fracture. Once it's done fracturing, you will see that there's a plus button right here. So once you see that, you're good to go and you can close that out. So from here, just make sure you click the plus button and then change the yellow material to this material if you want it to look like how it is in the thumbnail. So just use the ice one, the third one from the left. So just replace it with the yellow material and make sure the arrow is pointing down when you do this. Now I'm going to speed it up. Okay, so once you're done with this, you can just minimize this layer here. And then make sure you're selected on this layer and it's like yellow right here. And go to MoGraph and then go to Fracture. From here, just go to MoText and then click the plus button and then click the plus button to open each letter and just keep in the plus button until you see these pieces. Now from here, just click the first piece, scroll all the way down to see the last piece, hold shift and click. This will select all the pieces. And once you have all the pieces selected, you just want to drag it into the fracture layer. And again, make sure the arrow is down. Once you do this, you can just minimize this layer here and then minimize this and then repeat with the rest of the letters. So I'm just going to speed it up. So once you're done moving all these into Fracture, you can just minimize this text layer and click on Fracture to where it's yellow. It has to be yellow for this to work. Now, once it, you click on Fracture and it is this color of yellow, just click on Mo Graph, click on Effector, and click on Random. Now, once you do that, it should do this to your text that is fine, that is what you're looking for. From here, just go to Strength and raise it down to about, I'd say anywhere from eight to 12% depending on how much you want the crack to pop out. So if you want to pop out a lot, like I wouldn't go anywhere more than 10 or 12. Eight to 12 is a sweet spot, but for this example, I'm just gonna go 
with 10. All right, so that's pretty much it for the Cinema 4D part. Once you have this, you're pretty much good to go. So what left to do is click this icon right here with the gear. Just click this and click output and make sure it's 1920 by 1080 and resolution at 72. And then go to save and then click this button here and name it whatever you want. So I'm just going to name it template for C4D PNG. And then just click save. And since I already have one that's named this, I'm just gonna replace it. Alright, so once you have that saved as whatever you want it to be saved as, make sure it is also a PNG. Once you have all this done, you should be able to X this out. And then just click this button to render it. Again, I'm just gonna overwrite the file. So I'm just going to click yes, but you shouldn't have that. And then just let it render out. Now once it's done rendering, I will see you guys in Photoshop. So once you're in Photoshop, just click file, click open, and then go to your desktop and then click the folder. So, or just click the folder. So it's instincts, banner, template four. Just click the folder and then click the Photoshop document and it will open. So once it has opened, you again are gonna open your cinema 4d file that you just rendered so just click file open and then go to wherever you save that as so it should be in pictures if you saved it where i saved it and then go to wherever it is so just find it all right so once you find it just double click on it and it will open so once it is opened you just want to move it into the other projects so just drag it and move it in here and it might be a little laggy but that's okay so just drag this actually I'm gonna rename this real quick um double click on this uh actually text all right so I recommend renaming uh this layer text so you know what layer is which so again, you're gonna um, move this down to the um, down to this where it says layer two. So move it down to this layer, um, and then delete layer two, which is the previous text. All right. So once you have that done, you might want to center your text. So. Um, I'm selected on the wrong layer. So make sure you're selected on your text layer and then move it and it will move your text layer. So just center it and by the way mine is a tad too big so if your text is like too big or even too small you can hit control T hold shift and size it down or size it up but on my case I'm gonna size it down a little bit. I think that is pretty good. And then I'm going to center it. I think it should be all to the left. I'm using the arrow keys, left and right arrow keys to move it left or right. You can also use the top and bottom keys to move it up and down as well. So once you have it centered, I think that looks pretty centered. Um, you can move on to the um, CC. So also delete this watermark. This is just a watermark, so you know it's made by me. So I'm just gonna delete this watermark here. And then this is a CC. So if you want it, if you like this CC, if you like the way this color looks, and you don't really have to change anything, but if you want to change the color, you just hit the drop down arrow here. And then you click the second one, the second gradient one. And you want to double click on this circle icon here. So once you double click on the circle icon, you can change the color gradient to whatever you prefer. So usually I just make one. So I just click on one and then you can edit it by double clicking on it. And then just double click on one of the colors and change it to whatever. So if you wanted to go with a um, pinkish theme, just change it to pink and then change the other one to like whatever color you want so um, I'll go with like a uh, dark pink or so 
and that's just personal personal preference but I'm just going to cl click cancel here and go back to the one I had which was this one that's about right I don't know alright so once you are happy with the color you can move on you, you don't really need to do anything with the color correction just leave it alright moving on um also yeah, yeah I forgot um, so the layer, this layer, layer two copy, um, delete that layer and then make sure you're selected on the text layer and hit control J and make sure to put this one below text. So yeah, text copy under your text layer, hit control T, hold shift down and size this up a bit to about there, click enter and then center it under the text so it kind of looks like it's 3d kind of i'm going to use the arrow keys to get this better all right i think that looks pretty good um so once it's like this you like it like this um go to select or go to filter go to blur and go to motion blur and just blur it at Usually I use usually use it at 35 pixels, so I usually set it at 35 pixels So just click OK. It should be already set to 35 pixels, but if it's not just set it to 35 pixels and then This kind of looks cool, but if you want to like lower the opacity you can do that just by clicking the opacity and lowering it to about I think I had it at 15% maybe 20 and then you can also change the layer type too but I'm just gonna leave it at 20% so you can kind of see the E here and then like the little top here and then the Y a little bit here alright so moving on this layer is this these little dots so I recommend just leaving that and anything else you can pretty much just change the color so for example, this blue line, you can hit control U and then you can change the hue. But if you're to change the color, I recommend just using the CC to change the color. So that's pretty much it. Um, except for the last part. So the last part, what I usually like to do is go on your text layer and then hit control and hit J to make a copy. And then make sure the copy is on top and then go to filter filter gallery make sure you are on stylize and then click glowing edges and then just stick with the defaults here and click ok now this kind of looks really cool with this color here so you can leave it like that if you want but i always like lowering the opacity to about anywhere from 30 to 40 percent and then the uh putting the mode on blending mode on overlay so that makes it really pop a little bit now the difference is is this it's not much of a difference but it just makes it glow a little bit more and makes it a little bit darker i'm actually going to raise the opacity up a bit to 40. that looks better in my opinion so that's pretty much it once you are done with this uh, yeah that's pretty much it so once you're satisfied with everything, uh, just click File, click Save As, name it whatever you want. So I'm just going to uh, type in Template 4. Make sure you go to your pictures here. So just click the drop down button, click Pictures, and then change the format to PNG, and just click Save. Once this shows up, just click OK, and that is pretty much it. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Peace out.